In this video, I'm going to teach you how to analyze a Linux memory dump using volatility. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. I'm Chris, I'm a penetration tester, and I make a lot of cybersecurity videos. Now, if that's something you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell uh, to get notifications for all my new videos. Okay. Now, if you need me for a penetration test, for one-on-one -on -one penetration testing coaching, or if you need to consult with me on uh, cybersecurity issues, get in touch using the links in the description. And uh, if you want to learn how to code with Python, check out my Python Basics course in which I teach you the fundamentals of Python that will help you in cybersecurity and penetration testing. There is a link in the description for that as well. All right, uh, so today we're gonna do another challenge on uh, Attack Defense Labs. Now let me know, fellas, if you really enjoy these uh, uh, challenges as much as I enjoy doing them. So like I said in previous uh, AD Labs videos, Attack Defense uh, is a platform for hands-on practical training of your cybersecurity skills. Now, I already started this lab, so it's running over here, because it actually takes like uh, 20 to 25 seconds to actually uh, start from the moment you're clicking the start until uh, the lab is accessible. Now, in this challenge, we're being given a Linux memory dump as an image file. Uh, and we have to analyze it with volatility, which is a program or uh, a software specific for that purpose. Now, as we analyze uh, that memory dump, we actually have to answer a few questions that uh, will be considered as flags for this challenge. And as we get to answer the questions, we are actually verifying these flags. So this challenge is part of the Memory Forensics badge on attack defense and in future videos we'll probably solve the rest of them. There are actually two more, let's see, uh, there are actually two more uh, challenges in this uh, badge. So challenge one, two and three. So I haven't actually uh, tried these other ones yet. So yeah, uh, we'll probably look into them in future videos and maybe they'll uh, add some more uh, challenges to the badge. Who knows, we'll see, because they're actually adding a lot of challenges every week, and right now they, they have more than 1,100, so there's plenty of room to play with uh, on this uh, interesting and very uh, user-friendly platform, I would say. Now, let's actually go to the web instance and start uh, solving these questions. So, But before that, uh, as per the guidelines, we don't have to actually install anything. We don't have to install volatility and we can ac easily actually access it from the command line using the vol.py because as it says here, it was added as an environment variable. Okay, so the first question... Um, what was the PID of process or syslog? Uh, let's see where we're at. LS minus A. We can see the uh, memory dump image file. If we look at it, file memory dump. Uh, it simply says data. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, we can access volatility using vol.py. So vol.py, and we get the version, and that's it. Let's do vol.py minus minus help. And with this, we actually get the full spectrum of capabilities of volatility. Okay, so the first time I actually solved or I answered these questions, uh, it took me quite a while because I was doing a lot of Google search for each specific question. And it was particularly frustrating because I couldn't find too much information on Linux uh, memory dump uh, analysis with volatility. But um, I gotta be honest, my poor spirit of observation, so to speak, uh, prevented me from seeing uh, that all of the uh, supported plugins for Linux memory analysis 
were at the bottom of the output for the help message so yeah I know okay so um, all we need uh, to successfully answer these questions is uh, a little bit of intuition and uh, this information from uh, volatility now the first question once again what was the PID of process rsys log this is actually pretty simple and uh, I'll try to actually simplify it even further you can think of uh, volatility as a command line portal into uh, the memory dump plus a whole host of other superpowers that it comes with like we can see here now there are a few commands in volatility that allow uh, us to look into processes uh, so we can see Linux PS list, PS can, PS tree and so on and so forth uh, the one we need here so we need to uh, determine the PID of process our syslog and for that we're going to use PS list so how do we do it so we're simply going to say vol.py and then we have to specify the file for the memory dump which is memory uh, dump img in our case and then we'll specify the Linux PS list command and then we're going to uh, see what we get from uh, this one PID, PPID and all that stuff and we uh, we have a lot of output over here so the PID, PPID and instead of actually looking uh, for our syslog from all this we can simply repeat the command and then grab for our syslog and it says 644 so the PID was on the first column yeah so it's 644 plug it in over here verify and we have it verified alright the next one how many threads were spawned by the process rsys log okay so instead of going through the entire help uh, output we could simply do vol.py minus minus help and we can grab for thread and see if we get anything and we do have this one Linux threads so we could repeat the command memory dump let's actually delete so Linux threads and to be efficient from the very first start let's actually grab for our sys log okay and we only see the lines in which this our sys log appears but after a little bit of investigation I've uh, noticed that uh, this threads command uh, displays uh, uh, the threads for a specific process uh, each uh, one of them on a line so uh, to actually see all the threads we will have to specify how many lines after uh, this command how many lines do we want to display uh, after our syslog and I'll just say in this case uh, 10 for example so this is after and the minus B is before how many lines before you want to display so we can see the process name our syslog and then we can see the threads for our syslog and it's one two three four how many threads were spawned four okay next one the ins mode command which is used to insert is fired from which directory provide absolute path so um, on this one after a little bit of Google search I uh, figured out that um, we can see the history of the commands that have been typed in this memory dump and for that I'm just gonna do vol.py minus minus help and grab history and to see the history we actually have the Linux underscore bash I believe for Windows images uh, um, memory dumps and there is actually a different uh, command so we're gonna do uh, memory dump and Linux bash and we should see the full list of commands that uh, were in the memory at the moment of taking 
the memory dump. Okay, so uh, the question was uh, the ins mode command which is used to insert is fired from which directory? So we can pro we have to provide the absolute path for the directory from which the uh, ins mode um, was run. And it goes cd into lime src and then root lime src and then it triggers the ins mode. It executes the ins mode command. So this is probably the directory that we're looking for. We're going to paste that, verify. All right, what is the name of the parent process of process upstart? So if we look just a little bit above on the PS list output, we can see that we have the PID, PPID, UID, and all that stuff. Uh, PID is the process ID, PPID is the parent process ID. So in this case, we're looking for uh, the name of the parent process of process upstart. So we'll simply run a PS list and look for uh, upstart. And we can see that the parent process for upstart is uh, 1073. And then to actually get uh, the process for which this PID belongs to, we'll simply, as you might guess, grab for 1073. Because this is the PID, this is the PPID. So the PID, the process for which the PID is 1073, is light DM. Plug it in, verify done. What is the MAC address of the machine which had IP address assigned to it? So there are multiple ways. Uh, let's do vault.py minus minus help one more time. Like I said, there are multiple ways to look into network networking. We have the um, we have the IF config, we have the uh, NAT scan, we have the NAT stat, etc. But uh, once again, after some trial and error, I found out that it was the Linux ARP or the uh, so this command, which prints the ARP table address resolution protocol table, that was the one that I was looking for. So in this case, just simply Linux ARP, and we're looking for 8167. 8167 so the MAC address for this one is this one copy paste verify okay now the memory dump was uh, taken using lime to uh, using a TCP socket what is the port number used for this uh, socket Okay, so uh, here I actually remember, uh, I remembered seeing Lime in the command history. So if we go back to the command uh, history, we see Lime over here and we also see that uh, there is a TCP port 5000. So instead of actually uh, trying to uh, get the specific command to look into this, I tried the intuitive way. And I said, let me just uh, see if this 5000 would work. So I plugged 5000 in. And in this case, my intuition was correct. Uh, turns out that it's not like that all the time. Okay. Now, what was the mount point for a dev SDA? And as you might guess, We'll simply do vol.py minus minus help and look for mount. Look for grep mount, actually. Grep for mount. And we have mount and mount cache. So gather mounted FS devices. We'll simply use the Linux mount. So Linux mount. And then we have to grab for, I believe, dev SDA2 wrap for dev sda2 
this might take a while okay so it says boot okay let's try boot and the last question there is a kernel module which is used by a popular virtualization solution to provide additional services to guest OS this module was running at the time of taking the memory capture what is the name of the kernel module so we have the magic word kernel module let's just grab four kernel so kernel module this is what we're looking for at the moment the memory dump was taken so the one our perfect candidate for this one is Linux LS mod which is uh, which it actually gathers uh, the loaded kernel modules so we'll do uh, Linux LS mod and we're looking for some module that uh, is a popular virtualization solution okay um, now as with the previous as with some of the previous questions uh, it took a while for me to look into all of these and actually um, understand that they were talking about virtual box guest editions which is the one over here so um, the vbox guest uh, kernel module vbox guest and that's actually it uh, now this was a pretty basic uh, Linux memory forensics challenge with volatility now I suspect uh, the other ones uh, might be more difficult but we'll see now comment down below and tell me what's been one of your most interesting discoveries in doing memory forensics and let's say not necessarily in your work as a penetration tester but also in challenges comment below uh, again fellas let me know if you're uh, enjoying these challenges okay so before you bounce off I'd appreciate if you share this uh, video around so that we can grow the channel together please also don't forget to look into the description of this video for discounts on my Python course for penetration testing services and for one-on-one -on -one coaching until next time thank you for watching